Okay, prepare yourself because I'm about to show you something you've never seen before. Uh, I'm going to show you how to import a complex Rhino building massing into Revit and create a fully parametric tower that automatically displays live data and parking calculations that you can customize um, really easily. So uh, I'm going to jump into this first by opening up uh, Rhino. And I have this um, this massing, this twisted tower massing, kind of inspired by uh, Bjork Ingels project um, that I want to import into uh, Revit and use as um, uh, a mass that can control, you know, floor floors and floor to floor heights and uses and, and all of that. So um, once we, in, in this video, I'm going to show you how to do it, but um, the end result here uh, ends up being uh, something like this where you have a tower and you can grab certain floors and this is set to 14 feet and if I want to change this to 20 feet I just change it to 20 feet um, and if I want to make it you know a let's see a fitness floor just change the the use to fitness um, and as you're doing all of that you'll get uh, different area calculations um, and on your other sheets you'll get uh, your floor area use types calculated and you know automatically get FAR and, and all of this other um, really useful stuff in there and uh, so the other benefit to this uh, once it is done is I have in here this object hidden so if I unhide this this is actually what I imported from Rhino um, this is a mold what I call uh, a mold so it's basically the tower on the inside twisting is a hole cut out from this rectangle and I'm using this as a void form to cut um, a tower of custom made generic models uh, model in place generic models that have custom parameters and everything that I built assigned uh, to them so the cool thing is when done kind of right you can actually select this mold um, and change it to a different option and you'll automatically see how it affects um, your your kind of area over here so if I have all of these options and I, and I made all of these in in Rhino and imported them in a very specific way and and did all this this is the the benefit and you can actually you can actually change um, the options here and so the neat thing in this template is there's a sheet for design options um, that looks like this that actually tracks the the calculations and data per option and the other neat thing is you know once once you go in here you can you can change up the the uses and, and explore different types of uses and then you can change you can you can mix and match the uses with the different options and just to illustrate kind of what this ends up looking like I exported um, six sheets with six different options and this this creates for a total of 36 different options that, that I can whip up um, really, you know, really quickly. Um, so, so the, you know, 36 options is not a thousand options, but uh, you can see how quickly uh, you can explore uh, many design options while maintaining your ability to be the designer. Uh, personally, I became an architect to sculpt environments and not to have a computer sculpt them for me. So my point in showing this and, and using this template is to prove that you don't need AI, generative AI, to design your projects in order to make you more efficient. Um, what the industry needs is uh, better templates, better processes. Papa John's, please sponsor me. Um, you need things like this that automate the tedious stuff like crunching numbers and um, assembling presentations. And so that's what this template does for you and it you know, lets you be the sculptor. So uh, let's... Let's dive into to how we accomplish this. So I'm gonna go back to my 3D view here. And I have different steps in here broken out as uh, design options, so if you're following along. So the first thing I did was I, I put one of these generic model, model in place, um, custom generic model in place families that has all of these custom built parameters in here to track your parking required area, um, all of that. So the first step was to Kind of place place this in here, um, and you can actually grab the edges here and change 
the shape of this really quickly and easily and you can see that reflected instantly in the calculations so um, uh, yeah so then the next thing that, that you have to do here is to co copy this up so we want multiple floors uh, we want to copy this vertically so I'm going to do multiple copy vertically um, pick the base point and I'm just going to copy this up a few times okay so you can you know once this is done you can change the height of these floors right now it's set to 20 feet but watch what happens if I try to make this 25 feet you'll see it just bumps into the the floor above it so what we actually need to do is is go in edit in place and edit the work plane of these and I'll select the one below and then you know once we change this oops I think it was this one yeah They'll, they'll move up together and so you have to do this with this whole stack and then bring the whole stack up the other thing is to this is not using Revit's in you know built-in level system because it's too slow uh, we want something really 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 quick so in order to assign levels to these there's there's this level parameter down here um, and this is just to you know make sure our calculations are, are showing correctly and this is the the most time consuming probably portion of it so um, once that's done, um, we can go to step two, and I end up with a tower that is um, 25, or no, sorry, 45 stories tall, and each of these is hosted to the level below. So if I were to change this to 25, the entire tower grows up by 25, and you'll notice the level tier is set to all of these. So that's where we want to start. Um, before we do anything, we want to get a nice uh, stack. Um, that resembles your project, the kind of the overall um, buildable volume, so to speak, of your project. Um, yeah, and so the, the next thing is these are actually, we want these at 14 feet, all not 20 feet, so we go 14 feet. It'll change them all, shrinks the whole building down, and we can leave that bottom floor as, um, as 20 feet, and we can change that maybe, you know, maybe that's a grocery store. Uh, and it'll it'll change the color and you know it'll once again it'll propagate back to all the other sheets here um, yeah that's what we want to see and then um, so I think that that's it for that so the next thing I'll do is show you how to import the Rhino model uh, correctly and then to do this you want to be in your actual default 3d view um, so I'm going to go to Rhino where I have my desired massing shape. I'm going to copy this over and I'm going to create that mold. This vertical line is telling me how tall I need the mold to be. So um, there's a, you know, there's a few ways to do this. Uh, I'm going to extrude these curves. up and it's really important that this uh, is a solid poly surface it needs to be solid in order for this to work um, so we join all this together and join this all together so there we have our void um, or our mold uh, so to speak so I'm going to file export selected um, and I'm just going to call this, uh, I'll overwrite this one here. I'll replace it, yeah. So this is important. This is a very important step. So yours might be set to default here on the export scheme. You want to change this to 2007 solids. Um, for whatever reason, this is, this is the type that Revit recognizes as a mass or a volume that can be used to cut things. So we're going to hit OK. And that should be done. Um, and go back into Revit and so there's two ways to to import this model um, there's two ways to bring it in and to use it to, to cut things up so uh, the first way is to um, 
Um, yeah, the, the first way is to import the model in a model in place generic model family. So um, I'm going to go to architecture component model in place. It's going to be a generic model. And we need a generic model because these are generic model and we want them to only cut each other. So that's fine. Uh, next, go to insert import CAD. And you have to do import CAD here, not link CAD. Um, it, what I need to do here will not work if you link the CAD. Um, so, uh, units auto detect. This, is, this should all be fine. Okay, and there you'll see is the tower import. Um, so the next important step is you need to select this and go up to modify and click explode. Now you'll see it recognizes it as a volume and it has these shape arrows that you don't want to touch. Um, important not to touch these and hit OK. Um, now what you want to do is we're, we, we finished out this in, in place model. We need to um, drag it over here and Really, ideally, we want this to be just outside the edge. We want it because we don't want the edges touching each other. We want to build this so that it's just outside, um, just to be on the safe side here. And um, I'm actually going to change this type mark uh, here to void, and that's going to activate a filter that turns this transparent. And so we so we know what we're doing here. And from here, it's really simple. You just cut. Um, so, you know, we'll cut this bottom floor and then select and select the mass. Select this, select the mass, select this, and so on and so forth, all the way up the building. And as you're doing that, you will notice in the 3D view here, as you do that, these numbers will also change. All of your views uh, will. Uh, begin to reflect those changes and you know once you're done with that I'll move to step three um, oops move this so after doing all that you end up with uh, with something that looks kind of like what we started with in the beginning of this video something you can select a floor um, and you know change it change the height of it if I go and, and select this you know if we really want to be extreme I'll make this 30 feet you'll see it just shapes the entire tower um, kind of automatically. So the uh, the disadvantage of the way that we just did that, if I go back to this step, is that if I select this this uh, uh, the mold here, there's no option for me to change this to another another mold. Um, so the way to get that uh, capability, um, if I go back to my 3D view and go back to step three, that that, that capability is to change this, you know. To this just with a real quick switch you know and to, to get all these uh, calculations updated automatically that's the better way to do this is the smarter way to do this so uh, I'm just gonna revert back and go to this step. yeah this will work so this is the better way to do it so we want to go to file new family and we want an English Imperial for now I'm gonna use just generic model, no wall base, nothing base, just generic model. Open, and then um, yeah, it'll open up all of these views. So now what I'm gonna do is insert, import the CAD into this family. Um, all of this again should be okay. It'll bring it in. I wanna move it kind of to the center. And there we go. So, and then similar to last time you want to explode this modify explode this again you'll get these and then you know you do file uh, save as um, family one sure and then you load this into your project and Revit's like I don't care you gotta go find it um, I think it's at the bottom here Architecture component, place a component, and there it is, family one. So then, you know, similarly, we would change the uh, change the type mark, move it into place, cut it up just like we did before, and that's how you get this uh, this capability.
Um, yeah. So that is the, the smarter way uh, to do it. That's the second way to do it. Um, now the way to uh, get multiple massings is to, I have this file here where all of these massings came. You know, I just created all of these really super quick. Um, but I, I created a mold of, of all of these individually, exported them all individually, created you know, separate families for them. Um, but I, I kept the, the, the actual mold within the family the same in the same place. They all had to be in the exact same place so that when you go here, you can cycle through um, and change all of these real quick. And, you know, kind of project wide, uh, it, it becomes updated. Now, in this view, I have the filter turning this thing off, but for this video, uh, I just kept it on. So, yeah, so that's that's the, I've never seen anybody do it this way, but I experimented with this and, and found that this is, uh, yeah, this is the, the nicest process for kind of taking control over your project and maintaining, uh, you know, your your ability to sculpt. Really, at the end of the day, that's that's what we're looking for. Uh, so I want to change this back to the original uh, and give credit here to yeah. There we go. So. That's all for this video. Uh, if you found this useful, please like the video. Uh, and if you're interested in downloading this template as well as watching some step-by-step -step videos on, on how to use it, uh, the link's in the, in the description of the video. You can click that. Um, shout out and big thank you to Saad al Amira. Uh, I don't know if I'm saying that right, but uh, he's from the architecture firm Depth of Field um, for the inspiration for this uh, Rhino to Revit method um, and for being one of my first customers. So I want to help you win many projects, my friend. So um, I'll see y'all in the next one.